My name is Emily. I'm from Ontario, Canada, and I am 27 years old. I was tested five years ago, and my test results were positive for Huntington's. I remember thinking specifically that I felt like I had been hit by a train. Once I was told, I just turned and looked at my husband and my mom, and I was apologizing profusely to them for the fact that they would have to take care of me. I just like remember sitting up, like I was keeled over crying and then I sat up and I was just like, okay, so what do we do? So I had two people with me and I looked to my right and my left and I was like, can you read that again? And she's like, Natalie, you tested negative for Huntington's disease. And I was like, can you read it again? Because I didn't thought, think there was a way I was gonna test negative. I could see in the eyes of the, the doctor that gave me the results that it was weird for her to see me so surprised because she was expecting happiness out of me. And at the moment itself, I have to admit, I wasn't feeling anything. You always double check that situation, like good result as in it's a low repeat count or, um, yeah, it doesn't really feel real. I think that in the moment I didn't think anything. It was like if I was maybe even going to a little bit of what was going to happen. My first feeling was relief. I have a daughter and she was just over a year old at that time and to know that she was never going to be at risk was the biggest relief. I didn't want to get tested for a really, really long time. I didn't want to change the way that I lived my life and it was honestly just like a flip of a switch and I wanted to be tested. I had spent my entire childhood with a father who had Huntington's and my whole childhood had been controlled by Huntington's and I felt that the one thing I could do to control it was to figure out what my future was going to be. Eu tinha familiares da parte do pai com a doença e principalmente porque o pai estava a ficar com bastantes sintomas. Tive alguma curiosidade quando soube que era hereditário e não quis antecipar essa decisão, não quis andar a pensar se teria, se não teria. Leading up to it, it was a very chaotic time in my life. It was stressful because I was a caregiver for my mom and she was getting into the stages where we couldn't keep her at home anymore. So in order for me to really process my results, I had to make sure that she was in long-term care. I was consumed with thoughts of HD and researching and watching videos and, and doing anything I could to, to find out more and planning for my future. Before I got tested, I actually planned everything that I would need if I was positive um, to prepare to have kids going the route of IVF. That period was kind of a bit better because I was certain I wanted the results. I think the hardest part was six months before that when I was still deciding and trying to think about each possibility and whether I really wanted to know. Depois, I remember being very difficult because Eu planeava tudo o que queria fazer e o tempo que tinha para fazer era como se eu tivesse um prazo limite para fazer as coisas todas um, e tinha uma reação muito negativa quando isso não corria bem. I wasn't so much concerned about myself, but how other people would perceive me knowing that I had Huntington's. And I was really emotional about it that first week. I hadn't told my parents and I think one of my biggest worries was like telling my parents and then my mom feeling bad. It's not her fault obviously but that's just who she is so she uh, I didn't want to break her heart especially because she's symptomatic. I was feeling really bad uh, because of the guilt um, after knowing that you got away with it and others didn't. It took a year, it took over a year to sink in and uh, to process things and to make a new life plan. My whole life I've been at risk for Huntington's disease and then to suddenly, I'm not at risk. I'm, um, that was something that took a while, I think a good year to kind of come to terms with it and rebuild up the motivation. I don't know if I'm necessarily Happy I got tested overall, uh, but I, th I would say that I probably am because I think that now I don't have the questions of what if. I don't live wondering if I'm gonna have it or not. It's not the answer I wanted, but it's an answer, and so now I can accept that. 
Getting my test results really made my bond with my husband much stronger. He was incredibly supportive through the entire process and I felt that it was really important that if we were going through to get married that, you know, I put all my cards out on the table and I said, you know, this is me, you can take it or leave it and uh, I couldn't seem to get rid of him. <laughs> For me it was the right decision, but over time I've started to realize that this is probably one of the most personal decisions that someone can make in their life and I'm more understanding of why others would choose not to test while it was so clear to me that I had to. No matter what result you get um, and when you get tested, Huntington's doesn't leave your life. Even tests are negative, you know, my whole family are affected. I see patients every day, you know, it's always going to be a difficult thing to deal with. And um, there's definitely, um, I still struggle with it, but I'm guilty. It's not really a result you can celebrate too much. Foi algo que eu nunca me arrependi, porque Apesar de tudo, eu tento viver uh, com o lema de viver um dia de cada vez e ao máximo possível. E isso faz-me lembrar todos os dias que eu mereço fazer o um, um máximo por mim todos os dias também. I'm at a really good place now. Um, I have two beautiful children. I know that they're not going to develop Huntington's. I have so many positive things that have come out of this experience and I think that it's really brought a lot of things closer to home. In my family actually the only person left at risk is my sister. We're not a big family so I know that we're uh, closer together now as a family than before and that we can count on each other even if something would happen or if my sister would develop uh, the disease. I know we would be there for her and for each other. If I had any advice to give my younger self would be to don't push people away, especially people that love you and, and people that are in relationships with you. Some people really will stay with you and to assume that you don't want to burden them is a mistake because we can't go through life alone. I was incredibly lucky to have an amazing support system around me. It can make all the difference in the world just knowing that you have someone to talk to, someone um, to rely on and to have a shoulder to cry on. I'm going to school to get my master's in social work right now and I want to help people in the HD community. I want to be there for them. I want to share my experiences and to help them with theirs. I want to help them through their hard times because I've been there and I can relate. Sim, eu tento com que todos os dias sejam bons, uh, mesmo que existem coisas menos boas, lidar com isso o mais, o mais, o melhor possível para para não não nunca ter a sensação de desperdicei anos de, de uma, uma vida saudável. It really gives you a sense of of mortality, really, you know, knowing that there's this possibility that you might not be able to have 50 years to live out your dreams and to do the things you want to do. So I'm trying to make the most of every day. I've been very privileged to be working in HD research and, and be really immersed in the HD community as a whole, so not just the research community, but you realize how many people are working, such amazing people are working together to change the dialogue for HD families. and instead of being the secret and the hidden kind of horrible thing in the family. I think with the research right now, um, it's so exciting that they're testing a drug in people and people that are affected by this. It's not just mouse models and all this other stuff. That's great research, but it's just taken that like next step of excitement. And I think that it's almost relit my fire of hope and I thought my fire of hope was gone and it's not, so that's awesome. <laughs>